Hello everyone. Now, today we are going to start with life processes. This is the chapter 6 from NCRT book of class 10. This chapter of this series will be strictly according to the CBSE syllabus and by the guide on the basis of the guidelines given by NCRT. Now, life process, I will start with what is life? Or if I say, why do we call an organism to be living? Why do we call an organism to be living? So we want to discuss what are the characteristics. So we may say uh, an organism is living if an organism shows some visible movement. Shows some visible movement. Visible movement like, for example, a dog is running. It can be a man walking. Even if a man is shouting, birds flying, they may be chirping, anything that shows movement, rather visible movement, we may say that the organism is living. But the question arises, if a man is sleeping, we don't say, we don't see any visible movement. So now we come to another point that only visible movement cannot be the criteria, cannot be the criteria for an organism to be a living. Now, next is how can we say that plant is a living organism? Plant is living organism if we say plant is green in color. If plant, you can say, leaf falls down when it gets yellow, we say the leaf is non-living. But there are some plants which are not green, still we call them living. How do they show that the plants are also living? It means they show by growth movement. But the growth is not visible. Not visible means it is so slow that at a moment when you see a plant, we cannot say it's a living because it does, not, it does not show the movement which is readily visible. We may observe the growth of the plant after a day or two, three days. So, how can we conclude that organism is living now coming to the very micro level? There should be some molecular movement in an organism then we say an organism is living. Now what are these molecular movements? We have studied in class 9 that inside the cell we have cytoplasm and inside the cytoplasm we have salts, we have enzymes, we have water and we have many chemicals and these chemicals together form the molecule and they show movement and they show many types of reactions which we call them biochemical reactions and these biochemical reactions help the organism to maintain life to maintain life so we can say an organism is living only if there is molecular movement in their cytoplasm or in the cell. But this may be the case of unicellular organisms. You know, unicellular organisms. What are unicellular organisms? The organisms with a single cell as in case of amoeba as in case of any bacteria, as in case of paramecium. So these are the few examples of unicellular organisms and inside their cytoplasm they show the molecular movement and due to their molecular movement they maintain life. They maintain life so it is a molecular movement which makes them live. But 
what about multicellular organisms what about multicellular organisms as we know cell is the basic functional and structural unit of life cell together forms the tissue tissue together forms the organ and organs together forms the organ system and organ systems together forms an individual so an individual or any organism may be a plant may be an animal may be small may be big or may be giant is only living if its basic unit cell is showing any molecular movement because these molecular movement forms the basis of biochemical reactions which are the reactions of life bio means living biochemical reactions if they occur in the cell cell together if cell is functioning properly tissue will be functioning tissue will be functioning properly together organ will be functioning properly and so on an individual we call it as a living organism so here important question comes what is the criteria which we consider for an organism to be living this will be discussing later as an ncert question now our next part comes all these molecular movement they constitute the life processes so what are life processes now the question arises simple the life processes are the processes which occur in any living organism why to maintain life to maintain life or we can say to sustain life to sustain life these are the life processes and for the life process to occur what is the basic requirement we require energy and for energy what is required we require food as a fuel we require food as a fuel and we know food is organic in nature food is organic in nature means it contains carbon based molecules food contains carbon based molecules now once the food is eaten it does not serve the purpose unless and until this food releases energy and food will release energy only if it is digested properly only if it is digested properly it means food may be in different form we can call it is in the complex form it has to be digested why to convert complex form of the food into simpler form and we call it as a glucose it is the simplest carbohydrate now this glucose is to be broken down so here we call it as breakdown of food breakdown of glucose but for this we require oxygen we require oxygen so oxygen plus food breakdown releases energy now here question arises when we take food in take of food and completely converting into energy we call it here as a nutrition we call it as a nutrition but this is one of the life process but it alone cannot exist it alone cannot function why because nutrition means intake of food when food is to be converted from complex to the simpler that is known as digestion but digested food is to be broken down with the help of oxygen oxygen comes from the system called respiration it called respiration so this is the another life process now the digested food is to be taken from where it is eaten from mouth from elementary canal 
then to the cellular level. In cellular level, this oxygen is to be taken at cellular level. This digested food is also taken to the cellular level by a system, by a process called transportation. 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 So this is another system. Transportation system. Now, once the food, that is carbon-based molecule, is broken down with the help of oxygen, that is respiration, and energy is released, and this energy is used to sustain life. Now, with this, many toxins, many toxins are released, and these toxins are to be removed from the body. Otherwise, they will be, they are harmful for the body. Now, removal of this toxins, it has, it is with the help of a separate process called excretion. It's called excretion. So, how many life processes do we have? Nutrition, number one. With the help of respiration, this is number two. Along with that, we need transportation system. This is number three. Then excretory system. It is number four. And all these life processes takes place with the help of another system which includes brain, which includes nerves, and we call it as control and coordination. We call it as a control and coordination. So, all these processes are the life processes which occur, which play their role with the help of molecular movement to sustain life. So, we will be dealing with each of this life process in detail. That is nutrition in plants, nutrition in animals. Similarly, respiration in plants, respiration in animals and transportation and excretion both in plants as well as in animals in the next video. So that's all. This was an introductory lesson to the life processes. Thank you. Now we'll be discussing the NCRT questions for the topic till we have discussed. Question number one is, why diffusion is insufficient to meet the oxygen requirement of multicellular organisms like humans? Now, as you all know, multicellular organisms, they are made up of many cells and each cell is not in direct contact with the environment. So, gaseous exchange, ingestion or ejection of food or waste is not possible by all cells. And moreover, the process of diffusion is very, very slow. So it's not possible for all the cells, especially the outer cells, to pass the material to the inner cells to meet the requirements. So question number two is, what criteria do we use to decide whether something is alive or not? Since we have discussed it in the very beginning of this video, that this is a fundamental criteria is the molecular movement that is occurring to sustain life, even if the organism is not showing any visible movement. Right? And now question number three, what are the outside material used by an organism? So an organism needs three things, oxygen, water and food. Now depending upon the type of organisms, amount and form in which they obtain may vary. Amount means what amount of food and form means in which form, whether in decaying mat form or direct food like holozoic Organ, uh, the organism that take food in the form of holozoic nutrition or there are some organisms which may take food uh, directly from the living organisms like parasitic mode of nutrition. So, we'll be discussing these things in the next video also. And the next requirement for the organism is oxygen that it requires for the breakdown of the food that is a simpler form of the food that is glucose to release energy. And next is water that helps in the movement of molecules inside the cells. So, in a nutshell, an organism needs three things, oxygen, water and food, right? And our next question is, what processes would you consider essential for maintaining life? As you all know, 
they are nutrition respiration transportation excretion control and coordination and of course the reproduction to continue the species thank you